Hello and welcome back to the channel. Now recently I showed you that with a bit of um, thought and a bit of knowledge of the masking in Darktable then the uh, capacities of Darktable to mask are second to none. Today I'm taking a different tack altogether. I'm going to use some real AI artificial intelligence to make a mask on one of the photos and then bring the mask back into Darktable with the new raster mask import module and I'll show you how to get the image processed using an externally made mask. There we are. I'm Nicholas and let's go. This is the image we will be editing using the raster mask import module. Now you can see I've already done quite a lot to this image and as I was getting near the end I thought well I want to put some clarity or imagine whatever you like just into the the dog here without uh, spoiling the background. Let's say that the mask seems to be too difficult to do because of the blending here of colors or the fur that's, you know, very fine kind of strands of fur or a hair or on a model. Anything where you say, no, dark table can't do it. I need to do it. Now, the first thing to notice is that if I have the external raster mask on and in the pipeline, it is underneath the demosaic, which is done right at the beginning of the pipeline, which means that any geometrical transformations you have made are going to spoil the mask. That is the most important point of the whole video. There we are, I've said it. Now, I don't want to take turn everything off um, because I've already done this, this edit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a duplicate manager and I'm going to duplicate and get the original. Now, it would be wiser, of course, to do this before editing and think, oh, OK, I need a mask for this. But it doesn't matter. So I now have a duplicate. Now, if you think that your uh, software that uses AI for masking won't be capable of um, making the mask properly because of problems with contrast, now there's no harm in tweaking the colors at all. Um, you can also on this put in some vibrant colors. Um, now we can kind of go wild with the colors if, if we want, just to differentiate and help any kind of software. I'm not sure it's useful, but anyway, why not? So this is the image I'm going to make the mask out of. And I'll say this very clearly, you need to avoid any geometrical transformation of your image. So no lens correction, no rotate and perspective, and no crop. Right, that's said that several times now. Go back into the light table and we'll export this to a TIFF. Now, if you have in the script manager, if you've enabled on page two of Contrib, the external editor, which will, uh, which will enable you to go from um, the external editors here from uh, any TIFF or JPEG file, any bitmap file to, let's say, Affinity Photo or Photoshop or whatever you like. If you have that, then in export, you have a target storage called collections. And if I export to TIFF, then the TIFF will end up in my collection here. So that's um, handy. And that TIFF, I will edit in Affinity. Now, the point here is to make a mask of the dog. So I'll use the new um, AI features of Affinity 2.6 which I must say I am not very, very impressed with. But there we are, I mean, what do I know? I'm going to put that on black matte. And what I'm going to do, so background. Now, I'm not an expert at this. I'll get a bigger brush. I'll remove that. And my understanding is that the matte brush will recalculate and enable me. I think it's I need to put a bit of foreground here. Yeah, I'm getting a bit of background. So I'm not an expert and I don't want to spend half an hour. Let's get a reasonable mask going around here with some of the fur that was kind of sticking out. This is why I say sometimes it's worth spending time in dark table doing the masking. But I understand that in some cases, and these AI masks, which will get better and better, they could be a real added value. So there we are, I'll apply that and I want to output to a selection. And that selection, Command J, I'm going to copy 
and now I can remove the background and I can actually deselect Command D. And I'm going to put an empty layer, new layer, below that. And I'm going to fill that layer with black. So here, change the color, fill the layer with black. And you can tell with the black, the mask isn't perfect. Never mind. Um, you can actually erase that middle um, layer, but it doesn't matter because I, I want to just export what's visible. I have no intention of resaving the TIFF file, really. I'm going to export. Now, in the export, I've done quite a lot of tries and I found that PNG works well. Um, TIFF causes problems in the transformation to the PFM, which is the file uh, that we need to use to import into Darktable. Now, we don't have PFM in Affinity. Um, EXR is a 32 bit high dynamic range like PFM. So if you have a high dynamic range photo, the EXR works fine. I'm just going to use PNG for this. So don't change the size here. This mask has to superimpose exactly on the uh, original TIFF file that we made. Otherwise, your mask is gone, finished. I'm going to export. Now, in the desktop, I have made a folder called masks, and I'm going to call this mask dog. There. The thing we need to do now is turn the mask I just saved into a PFM format. Now, unfortunately, Affinity Photo can't, but um, Image Magic can, and I've installed that through Homebrew, and I'm sure it can be installed and used in any terminal on um, Windows or, or uh, Linux as well. So the instruction is just magic now with a K. And um, what I'm going to do now is go to the file where my mask is. I'm going to right click and I'm going to copy that as path name and CD. Now just make your way to the path. So obviously not the file, but just the place where the masks are. And the uh, instruction you need to do is magic dog.png dog.pfm. And now I have the correct PFM file. Notice the size 25 megabyte for the PNG, and we are at over 255 megabytes for the PFM. And if you want to keep the um, editing in Darktable, you do need to keep the mask. If you delete the mask, then your um, all the editing will uh, well will dysfunction in in Darktable. Another way to transform the PNG into a PFM is in GIMP, which is free. Now, Image Magic is free and open source too, and it works on all the platforms as well. So here I have it. Uh, we've just loaded the PNG, and we can export as, and we'll call this one dog. Uh, we'll call it this dog GIMP uh, dot PFM. Now I don't know if I need to select the type or whether it will accept that i think it's done that so we'll quit gimp and go back into dark table so here we are again this tiff is now useless the original exported file here the duplicate is useless too and we can go straight back to the raf file which has um been cropped and it has got the lens correction well that is of no importance whatsoever I'm going to rename uh, this external raster masks and I'll call it dog because I like having names. So let's control click on the title and I will open this mask. So desktop masks, and we'll try dog.pfm. And here we have the mask. So it is black and white because it's a mask. It's using all RGB channels. And as the mask is color, we can actually get some um different ways of masking now don't forget that when you mask uh white will be um what, what they say is white reveals and black conceals so everything that's white will take the effect and everything that's black will not take the effect so let's say i want to just work on the fur and less on the on the on the ears or something i could use that channel and if i want to use kind of more of it I could use all RGB 
And at a pinch, what I could do also is if I go back into Affinity Photo um, and I reselect, I'm going to do that. There we are. Just went Control Z. I went backwards. I'm sure there's a better way of, of selecting that. But what I could do is actually get a brush and paint on top. And I could actually paint this completely white. There we are. I get a uniform mask. And I would deselect that. And then on the new layer, just do the same as before. New layer, sorry, new layer. Put that one underneath and fill that one with black. So I click on X to get black. I'm on the pixel layer here. And that's not black. And that is black. And so I could get something that is completely um, you know, black and white. Um, didn't manage very well there. I think I've got some colour left. Anyway, you can turn it into a black and white document to have kind of a very flat mask here. It doesn't actually really matter. It won't change much. So I'm going to use this mask as it is in um in dark table as soon as i close the external raster mask um module then that mask disappears and let's say i want to go into we'll try a contrast equalizer now you'd go to raster mask here and in the raster mask you choose the external raster mask dog and if i go on that then the raster mask is absolutely perfectly shaped even if I have cropped and I have done the um, lens correction, etc. So that does follow through the rest because I made the mask on the base image without any transformations. So um, I'll just get a large circle and increase, let's say, some clarity, local contrast on the dog. And there we have it. Uh, if you want to check how good your mask is, this is where I always get disappointed with AI masking. Um, let's do the raster masks on the dog. So this mask can be used in every single module because it's low down. It's available to all development modules. So that's a good thing. And I could, let's say, turn the exposure right down. All right, it's a bit white. There we are. And you could see if there's any effects on the edges. You can see them here. But for normal editing, I'm sure I'd be fine. It wouldn't be really be a problem. So there we are. And that is how you import um, a mask. Now, if you want to have several masks, then that's not a problem. You could also uh, duplicate this, have another external raster mask for something else. We could take another mask. Well, in this case, I will actually take the same one. I'll go to the desktop masks and try the version from the GIMP, which is exactly the same and does work well too and i'd call this one um let's say dog gimp and this mask whether it's masking the dog or something else in the image it would be available also to every single um module you want just go to raster masks and now if i go to the raster mask the choice here i will have two external raster masks dog and dog gimp you can have as many masks made externally as you like just be careful they do take up a lot of space on the hard drive so there we are there that's the end of this uh, demonstration i hope you enjoyed it um i hope you learned something and uh, there we are that now you know how to use the external raster mask module hey what a day right well i will say goodbye and i'll see you all soon so rather